Hi and welcome to Travelog. I'm Turan and after visiting sacred snow-capped mountains, we're now on our way through Daocheng where we'll experience the harmony between nature, religion and the traditional way of Tibetan life. We'll pass through Xiangcheng and its scattered white brick houses and finally arrive at Duorong on the border between Sichuan and Yunnan. Let's get back on the road. Although we've already found Joseph Rock's Shangri-La, we still haven't finished our travels. Our route back from Ruwa passes by the spectacular Masyung Valley with its multicoloured forests. And I've been told that come spring, the landscape changes to seas of rhododendrons covering the mountainsides. Our destination today is Daocheng, where most people stop off before continuing on to Ruwa and the Yading Nature Reserve. Daocheng's actually a three hour drive from Ruwa, so be sure to make your return journey during the day, lest you miss out on the amazing views. After driving across countless plateaus and 4,000 metre high mountains, we finally reached Daocheng, where the order of the day was to find accommodation. It's a really wonderful afternoon and after looking through a lot of hotels and hostels, I decided on this one because it's got a really nice family feel to it and sitting here in this courtyard with the sun on my face, it feels really, really relaxing. And uh, what's really nice is that it's got such a nice family feel and everyone's kind of sitting outside playing cars and drinking tea. It's, uh, it's, it's really relaxing. The owners of the hostel actually live in the room next to mine so it was an added bonus that I could pop in for a chat when they were free. The main attraction for me was the hostel's traditional Tibetan architecture, complete with slanted stone walls and decorated square windows. Most guest houses in Daocheng follow this style and there are plenty to take your pick from. All right guys, this is my room. I'm staying in this really nicely decorated Tibetan style dorm and it's actually quite cheap. It's around 30 RMB for one bed. The next morning, we struggle out of bed at 5 a.m. as we'd heard the sunrise over Sula village is one of Daocheng's most unmissable events. If you want to get a real taste of Tibetan life, you have to get up early in the morning and you'll see the locals milk their yaks, send them out to graze and then collect the yak pats as well. <laughs> Though it's not the most pleasant thing to look at, yak dung is very important for Tibetans. It's used as fuel for their fires, allowing them to cook, boil water and keep warm. So she's now separate separating out this huge pile of yak pat and uh, I've got my brick of dried yak pat at the ready and once she's finished I'm going to start flattening them as well. <laughs> it feels really weird but uh, it's, it's actually really clean and there's no nasty smell or anything. It's, uh, it's hard work. And to think, this one lady, she collects all of the yak pat in that basket of hers and she brings it here and starts patting it all by herself. <laughs> it's really not mud. <laughs> I've got less on this hand, but um, it actually doesn't smell too bad. Seeing my diligence, my new friend invited me to join her for butter tea with her family. Villagers here are very welcoming and will often invite people to their homes. Moving on, our next stop lies at the old residence of a very interesting family. The locals tell me that uh, 
That huge poplar tree over there was the first poplar tree in Daocheng and that all the other poplar trees you see around you are the seeds of this one. Let's go look. Folklore says the founder of the family here was a living Buddha. After returning from his spiritual wanderings, he planted his walking stick made of poplar into the soil. From this grew a huge poplar tree, the first in Daocheng and the mother of all the poplars here. The family that lived here is something of a miracle in the Cam region. For over 700 years, each of its 20 generations had a living Buddha reincarnated into the clan. Not only that, they even had living Buddhas of two opposing sects living peacefully here. As such, you can find two prayer rooms inside this house, one for the Yellow Hat sect and one for the Stripe sect. The family still has living Buddhas to this day, but they've now vacated this house in order to turn it into a family museum. I found this old Buddhist sutra tablet lying around and uh, it, I don't know how old this is, but just feeling all the rivets and the, the lettering, it feels incredible. It's like I've found some kind of old treasure and I can just imagine how many centuries, how many generations worth of living Buddhas might have read the same sutra as well. The uh, best form of transport here in Daocheng is actually a bicycle and I've rented one for a day for around 20 RMB and uh, I'm going to go see the sights around the town. Even though I'm at quite high altitude, this bicycle ride is really, really relaxing. I've got the sun shining on my right side of my face. I've got the mountains and I've got the golden trees to the left of me. It's really, really, really calming and relaxing here. As fun as it is to cruise around on your bike, do remember to take it slow as the air here is still quite thin. Regardless, if the exercise doesn't take your breath away, I'm sure the scenery definitely will. I've cycled for one and a half hours and I finally reached the Bampu Lamassery, which is the biggest here in Daocheng and belongs to the Kagipa sect, the white sect. Let's go inside. Almost everyone in Daocheng follows Buddhism and there are several Lamasseries here within easy reach. However, I've come to Bangpu Lamassery as I've yet to visit one belonging to the white sect. This establishment was built towards the end of the 12th century and is purportedly the oldest lamassery in Daocheng. One of the most important reasons for people visiting the Bampu lamassery is the statue of the founder of the white sect that he created with his own hands. Remember when you're visiting you must take off your shoes. This statue is of the Kamapa Dusum Kiempa, one of the founders of the Kagyu sect. There are in fact four main schools of Tibetan Buddhism, traditionally distinguished by the colour worn by their followers. As such, the Kagyu sect is also known as the White sect for the white robe their founder wore while meditating. This group is particularly mysterious as its teachings are passed down orally, so the relationship between teacher and student is highly stressed. But that's not all. I've been told this lamassery holds something else that's also very dear to its followers. Legend has it that the first Kamapa wrote some words onto the rocks above and we're going to go and climb and see if we can decipher them. <laughs> few people have actually climbed up to read the Kamapa's words and fewer have understood them as they're written in old Tibetan script. However, I wanted to see for myself what was written there and see if my guide could make heads or tails of them. Uh, 
，他说过的话去修行啊。那么就你们看到他这些的字过后，就像他看到他的真身一样。哦，这个意思、啊，这大概是这样意思。哦，<笑>那这这底下还写了一些东西哈、啊，这底下。Legend say that Dusum Kempa ceased his religious wanderings here. With the blood from his own nose, he wrote onto the rocks above that he travelled all across the Kham region, and that this place was the most beautiful. Although I couldn't find those words in the end, all you have to do is look around you, and you'll also find yourself slowly falling in love with Dalton's beauty. There's a saying here: Come to Sula to see the sun rise, and go to Bung River to see the sun set. And what better way is there to finish off the day sightseeing than by visiting a natural hot spring? I've had a very long day's worth of cycling around, and I'm going to treat myself to this、uh, Rubuchaka hot spring, which is around a 20-minute ride outside of town. I'll see you in a bit. It may not look like it. But the water here supplies every single household in Daochong. There are many family-run bathhouses in Rubuchaka, and tourists will often come here to relax after a tiring day, or indeed even stay for the night. So it's actually really cheap. This place is around 10 RMB per room, and this is mine. I need to go in and change. So give me a bit of privacy. After an entire day of sweating on my bike, it was a great feeling to sit back and let the hot spring waters wash everything away. I've had a great soak. I'm dressed up in traditional Tibetan attire, and、uh, we're going to go get some grub. It's not often I don my camper clothing, but I've gone and got specially dressed up just for this dinner. Oh, nice! My friends have、uh, invited me to a very traditional Tibetan dinner, and the spread looks awesome. Ah, these are all the things. Food is that, uh, what? Uh, what? Food is that? Food. 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 呃，这个是牛肉包，啊、这个是奶扎包、啊，嗯，这个是土豆包，这个是牛肉蘸蘸水吃的、啊，然后这个是手抓牛肉，啊、呃，这个是牛舌，牛舌，对，牛舌。<笑> this is a this is a whole yak tongue. This was a veritable feast by any standard, and I was touched by how far my friends had gone to welcome me. 好，来。This is yak tongue. Let's、uh, let's give it a try. Hmm. Hmm. It's actually really good. Thank you. Ah. You see, we today just is to eat this food. We specially made this traditional Tibetan clothing. Then you have to wear it. Why? Because you eat it with modern clothes. We wear 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 it with